Nikhil, it's great to be with you. And we're going to talk today about one of my favorite everyday equations. Your well-being as an individual is greater than your organization's well-being, or in our case, greater than Deloitte's well-being. This has been so important in the pandemic. And Nikhil, what I experience is that most people intellectually grasp this equation. They know that that's the way things ought to be, but it's really hard to implement. So what we want to do today is hear a little bit how you've implemented this equation so that people inside our organization and people outside can have some tips and tricks on how to bring your well-being is greater than your organization's well-being to light. So Nikhil, yep. start with telling me, what does this equation mean to you? Yeah, so Dan, um, this I, I would say this is something which I've been thinking about even pre-pandemic. But one of the things that the pandemic really forced me to expand upon when the concept of well-being is we used to operate under somewhat of a singular definition where mm. well-being was equivalent to physical fitness. So as long as my teams were able to go to the gym, you know, reasonable frequency every week, my job was mostly done in terms of well-being. And then what the pandemic forced me to think about is, wait a second, it's, it's not just about the physical aspect of well-being, but you also have to consider mental well-being, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, social, financial well-being. And I think that broadening of that term uh, was, was something that was an eye-opening thing for me. And even for us as a practice, if you, if you recall, not too long ago, we used to call it the fitness subsidy. Yes. And now we call this the wellness subsidy. So I think that broadening of what we consider well-being uh, and then everything else that followed that, that sort of mental broadening was important. 